Hey, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and maybe you're wondering what the heck is fascia anyway? Alicia talks about it so much, it's becoming popular, uh, and every technique here on Mobility Mastery is walking you through fascia release, but what is fascia? What is its role in our body? I'm gonna walk you through that today, and I've got six critical roles here of fascia that we're gonna cover and before we dive in, I just want to say that I've been studying fascia for going on 11 years now. So I started off in 2008. It's now 2019. And I'm still learning every single day. So there's no way I could cram 11 years of knowledge into one little piece of paper here. <laughs> um, but these are my like major bullet points, like the headlines, the things that I think everybody should know about their fascia and their body if they want to function optimally and you know be able to take care of your body by understanding what it's made of and what those roles are that that fascia plays in your body so um i'm going to give you before we dive into these six critical roles here i'm just going to give you my little fascia spiel that i give every new client i work with or if anybody asks me verbally you know what is fascia uh, so fascia is the most abundant tissue we have in the body. It wraps every single nerve ending. It wraps every fibril of muscle tissue and then every fiber of muscle tissue. Uh, but most people, you know, when they think about fascia, if they know anything about it at all, do think about it like it's wrapping the muscle. Uh, but it's so much more than that. And it doesn't exist in linear form. Um, just like wrapping the muscle. So that's one linear form of fascia, but it really goes everywhere in a crisscrossing matrix. Um, and visual that I like to give people is, as far as the musculature goes, if your naked body were a piece of muscle fiber, your clothing is the fascia. Um, so that's just one way of thinking about it. But then also, because it goes everywhere and it's wrapping those nerve endings and wrapping your organs and your bones, uh, the other visual that I could give you is if we took out everything in your body right now, except your fascia, so your bones, your muscle tissue, your organs, uh, the nerves even, and all that was left is your fascia, you would potentially, this is what they say, still look like you, because fascia is really the thing that gives you your unique shape and texture. So I think that's pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, so that's just a general overview of what fascia is, and there's a lot of, you know, scientific um, videos that you can look up online. Uh, if you've ever, you know, cooked a chicken, it's the white stuff, you know, uh, covering the chicken, the little white parts in a steak. Um, but you can look up other videos. I'm not gonna, you know, dissect anything for you today in this video. Uh, strolling under the skin is probably one of the best videos out there for understanding what fascia is from like a visual perspective where they actually, you know, go under the skin and look at fascia through a microscope. Uh, so, with that said, we're going to dive into these six critical roles here that I have seen, uh, you know, in my own body and in my private practice working with people in pain, um, as well as towards optimization for some clients, and then also just through my research. Uh, so, number one here is... Cellular health, and I'm just going to put a slash and write ECM. Um, so this stands for extracellular matrix, and the ECM is getting talked more and more about these days, which I love. Uh, but I've been fascinated by the ECM for years because it's the watery and nutrient dense part of your body and your fascial system where it's kind of like your refrigerator or your, um, you know, snack cabinet or whatever, pantry. Um, and it's basically the part of your fascial system and your body that houses cellular food. So the collagen and the glycoproteins and um, the elements that synthesize amino acids, a lot of that is found in the extracellular matrix. And what your cells do is they pull it out of that extracellular matrix, which is part of the fascial system, um, to repair themselves, to regenerate. So every cell in your body needs to regenerate every so often, right? Um, and actually rebuild itself 
And then also, um, the cells, in order to stay healthy, right, for cellular health, they need to be able to excrete waste and then have that waste taken out of the body. So they excrete the waste into the ECM and through that extracellular matrix system, it's hopefully ushered out of the body. Uh, so if you consider, you know, an unhealthy aspect of this, right, the ECM and, you know, maybe cellular health getting compromised, then your cells maybe don't have the nutrition they need. Uh, maybe that ECM has gotten unhealthy to the point that it can't usher toxins out of your body. Um, and so that's just one thing to start to think about um, as it relates to fascia and the roles that it plays in your body. And by the way, we could literally do, oh, like I could do an hour video just on this <laughs> um, in addition to each one, but I'm just gonna kind of go through them quickly and introduce you to each of these six roles. And if you stay with me any length of time at all or take any of my courses, then we dive a lot deeper into each of these. Okay, number two is one of my favorite um, things to talk about is it uh, pertains to fascia and one of its major roles that I see that isn't talked a lot about. And that is protection. So there's this little known fact about fascia uh, that I think is really critical to understand. And that is that fascia can actually contract independent of muscle tissue and independent of your conscious control in order to protect you. Uh, and so it's gonna respond to you and some of the messages you're giving your body about whether you're okay or in danger. Um, so this is gonna you know, play a role in, if you're in a car accident, your fascia will actually contract really powerfully uh, to protect you from death, really. Uh, but also, fascia can actually respond to chemical messengers like fear by thickening or hardening because it thinks you're in danger and you need protection. And so um, I just find that fascinating. The implications here for all kinds of soft tissue, you know, syndromes or dysfunctions uh, you know, connective tissue disorders, myofascial pain syndrome, stuff like that, uh, fascia actually has pain receptors in it. But also I think there's this un, this not talked about element within the fascial system that it can respond to fear, it can thicken to protect you, and then this creates like a vicious cycle because thicker um, fascia might give your nervous system the, you know, message that you're in danger all the time, and then you're stuck in a loop. So super critical to think about here, but also anytime you get on a foam roller, if your nervous system thinks that you are in danger from the foam roller and the sensations you're feeling, or if you're getting a massage and it's so deep, right, that you're, maybe you're getting a deep tissue massage that it activates some kind of fight or flight in you and your nervous system thinks you're in danger, it'll enact this protection mechanism and your fascia will actually fight what's happening and not allow you to be changed AKA damaged or hurt or maybe killed. <laughs> um, so super, super interesting. Um, and lots we could talk about here, but we're gonna move on. Uh, number three, also very important here. They all are. <laughs> um, is something we could call glide. Uh, but I'm also gonna put Hydration, and when I say hydration, I'm talking about cellular hydration and glide, and they kind of go hand in hand here. So in order for you to move and function optimally, your muscle fibers need to glide, your fascial fibers actually need to glide, uh, your nerves need to glide, actually everything in your body needs glide in order to, you know, function efficiently basically. Um, so we're talking about nerve communication, being able to travel quickly, uh, and you know, like I said, movement becomes sluggish and sticky or slow, um, the less glide you have in your fascial system. So fascia has a high water content, like 70% water. And when we actually break it down, some of that is in the extracellular matrix, um, some of it is more intracellular, uh, and it's really that intracellular 
hydration that is super critical because if you get dehydrated, you die. Um, I mean, you could get ill, right? And if you're too, too dehydrated, then you die. So cellular hydration is actually like a really critical role that fascia plays because that water content that your cells need is gonna get stored in the ECM over here and then pulled from the ECM, which is extracellular, into the intracellular matrix of your body. Um, so intracellular hydration, super important. So there's, it doesn't matter how much water you're drinking, if it's not getting into your cells, you could be dehydrated. And it's really your fascial hydration that determines really how much water content, content you're carrying in your body. And um, yeah, just super important here. And it's actually that water content that is responsible for the glide. So fascia is 70% water. The rest of it is that collagen and glycoproteins and the other elements, um, but it's mostly water. And so what happens is when it loses its water content, it becomes sticky. So instead of being fluid and watery, it becomes more like glue because it's now collagen-like instead of watery. Um, and that's where you're gonna get fascial adhesions or ropey tissue, um, dense, brittle tissue. It can get dried out and brittle, like dry ground that isn't getting enough water into it as well. So very, 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 very critical role here um, that fascia plays. And fascia release, when you do it effectively, can definitely uh, increase the glide as well as the cellular hydration. And this could be a huge video we could talk about and I am going to return to this one quite a bit on this channel so stay tuned we're going to dive deeper on that um, okay number four did I spell that right anyway <laughs> All right, good thing I'm not teaching you how to spell. Um, so number four is connector and separator. So fascia is a connector. It connects every element in your body to each other, um, but it's also a separator. And this, I think, is just really cool to kind of think about and contemplate and get curious about. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but... Fascia is the only element in your body that touches all of the other elements. Um, all those other, other elements, right, so your nerves and your muscle tissue and your bones aren't really supposed to touch each other. And when they do, you get a signal, right? Like if you're bone on bone in your knee, for example, you're going to feel it. That's going to be painful because you're not supposed to be bone on bone. There's supposed to be fascia there and things separated, right? Um, so connector and a separator. And like I said in the beginning, it's everywhere and we have more of it than anything else. So that's just something to think about. Um, and this actually plays a huge role in, you know, joint pain and pelvic instability. So because fascia connects everything in your body, um, if it gets knotted up or, you know, out of balance in that connection matrix, <laughs> then the, the elements that are connected are going to be affected, right, by that major imbalance or the adhesions uh, in that fascial system. And number five. Your lymph system lives inside your superficial fascia. So superficial means closest to the skin, and there's an entire fascial system close to the skin that's a little different than the fascial system, say, in your deep musculature or deep to the bone. And uh, that lymph system lives inside the superficial fascia. So if your superficial fascia is getting tight or brittle or dehydrated or stuck in knots, then you better believe it's gonna affect your lymph system. And so what is your lymph system? Well, it has a huge part to play in your immune system and your ability to detox and move toxins out of your body. So if you can't move toxins out of your body, you're gonna be in big trouble, right? Um, I think that's a, you know, Huge, a huge uh, part of many diseases and illness today, including potentially cancer, um, but all kinds, right? So you have lymph throughout your whole body. It's in that fascial system. If one gets unhealthy, it can affect the other. So definitely something to consider here if you're working with 
um, toxicity or detox. And I have another video on this that you can watch if you want to. We'll link to it below this video because this really deserves its own video because I want to walk you through what to do if you feel like this is your problem. Um, so that's all the time we're really going to spend on it today, but definitely one of the critical roles here that fascia plays in my opinion. And finally, number six, big one, <laughs> communication. So that watery fascial extracellular matrix <laughs> um, part of the fascial system is really the super highway of communication in your body. And it sends those nerve uh, communication signals through your body. So your fascial system plays a huge role in your brain and your body's ability to communicate to each other. But in my opinion, it also is how your body can communicate to you. Like you, the conscious person owning the body, um, you can get communication signals from that fascia if you learn how to tune in and feel it and pay attention to it. Uh, but super important here. So if communication is you know, impaired or cut off in your body. I mean, if it's cut off, you die, right? Like that's your central nervous system and your spinal cord, of course. And if that is compromised, I mean, you're gonna either be paralyzed or you're gonna be dead. So communication is super, super, super important. And that communication has a lot to do with that fascial system being open, the channels being open. If there's a dam anywhere, right? It's kind of like if you think about a river, if there's a dam, it's not gonna flow. So that's for communication, for energy, for blood. All of that is relevant when we think about blockages, right, in the fascial system, but for sure communication as well. So if that fascial system is restricted, brittle, dehydrated, your nerves can't communicate effectively or efficiently. And so communication is gonna be sluggish and maybe some of the messages don't even get through or they get misinterpreted. Uh, so this is obviously, they're all a big deal. Um, that is why I call them the six critical roles that fascia plays in your body. So I would really love to hear from you. Like maybe you knew some of these, but maybe you didn't know any of them. Um, but which one really stuck out to you? Uh, please share that below in the comments. And I'm also really curious to hear from you if you feel like one of these in particular is like your either weak spot or the thing getting your attention um, through your body, if you're in pain, if you're injured, if you have you know something like fibromyalgia or myofascial pain syndrome or anything like that. I'm curious which of these really stands out to you as a potential route you can go to investigate how you can actually help your fascia, support your fascia, get it healthier, and feel healthier as a result. So share that below. I can't wait to hear from you. And that is my somewhat brief, I know we've been here probably longer than most of my videos, but somewhat brief explanation of fascia and how important it is in your body. And of course, we'll just dive way more into this in time because I'm learning new stuff all the time. That just blows my mind and I can't wait to share all of it with you a little at a time. All right, uh, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to join my email community where I give you some really cool free resources as well as some occasional free email trainings I don't do anywhere else, you can join by uh, clicking the link below this video in the description. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.